Uh, there was a movie here Wednesday night. There was. Okay. Amber talked to Pastor Angela and uh, started out. Pastor Angela said you were sad and then you were glad <laughs> because she led you to the Lord. Mm -hmm. Now, later this morning, you see that tank over there? There's water in it. Brian, wave your hand. <laughs> he filled that up yesterday. It's even warm. He put all the hot water in it. Okay? All right. And plus there's a heater. So af after the service today, Amber is, and Pastor Angela is going to, and a couple of us may make sure she gets in it. All right? <laughs> and make sure she gets out of it. So that, that is what's going to happen. Uh, you guys did it together. Yep, absolutely. So you can get in it, you can get out. Yeah, okay. All right. Uh, fourth lesson. The day death lost his grip. His, you notice that? His? Yeah. His grip. A launching pad into the fullness of this life. We've now done this introduction three times. I'm going to hurriedly do it the fourth, unless I stop. Uh, so there's two options in life. Life and death. The choice is ours. Which, we go to ch which one are we going to pick? A life. Deuteronomy 30.15 says, See, I have set before you this day life and good. Got it? Death and evil. There's a, you see the separation? Don't mix them up. All right? Don't. Deuteronomy 30, 19, and parts of 20, I call heaven and earth to record this day against you. I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Which one are you going to choose? Yeah, life and blessing. Therefore, choose life, he says. He helps you out. And both thou and thy seed may live. That thou mayest love the Lord thy God, that thou mayest obey his voice, that thou mayest cleave, cleave, cleave fast together, abide to be joined together unto him, for he is thy life and the length of your days. He is your life. C current. He is your life. Wow. Okay, so the day you chose life was the dawning of a new and living way. Romans 6, 4 says, and we'll be back there briefly later, therefore we were buried with him by baptism into death, that like as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we should walk in newness of life. We should walk in newness of life. We should walk in newness of life. A different walk, different life. Now, this life, I've gone ahead and defined it by Vine's Dictionary because it is the clearest for my understanding. This life is life as God has life. That life which a father has in himself, that life which he gave to his son, to have in himself, and by faith in Christ, this life also becomes the life of all believers. All right? Enjoy it. Because it comes with blessing. <laughs> yeah, it does. Our new position of being alive in Christ is to be free from sin and alive with Christ's life living in us with the outward expression of all his divine benefits. All right? Now, the result is, hang on, we've been here multiple times and I can't, I don't seem to get away from it, so let's do it again together. You ought to be able to quote this now pretty quick. All right, 
Here we go. It's in Colossians 2, 9 and 10. This is the amplified version of this. For in him, in Christ, the whole fullness of deity, or the Godhead, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, continues to dwell in bodily form. Got it? He, he was here in bodily form, giving expression, complete expression of the divine nature or the, or the Godhead. Now hang on. Do you see what it says next? And you are in him. A born again child of God is in Christ. You are in him. You have been made full and have come to fullness of life. Same life we were talking about. In Christ you too are filled with what? The Godhead. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. He resides in here. We're going to divide this later this day because while he comes and gives you this life and his expression in here, also he leaves something for you to work on. Have you ever noticed? This thing up here, intellect, will, and emotion, you'd be, you'd be renewed by that. So says Romans 12 too. This thing, this outer shell, this earth suit, he says, you sacrifice that. That's your reasonable service. Okay? Or your spiritual service. So you have to take those steps. Is, does it happen in a moment of time? We'll discuss that too, briefly. So here we are. This is, this is the result. Now how did we get here? Oh, did I finish it? Probably not. <laughs> in Christ you too are filled with the Godhead, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit and reach full spiritual stature. He is the head of all rule, authority, of ever angelic principality and power. <laughs> Folks, you are endued and endowed and empowered and whatever else. Amen. Thank you. Now, how did we get here? We left sin behind, didn't we? Uh-huh. Now, our new beginning in Romans 6, 1 and 2 speaks of it like this. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? The truth is, now hang on, this is the truth. We were dead we were dead, were dead in trespasses and sins. But through Christ we become alive to, or dead to, sin. As this verse says, and we would say, what a swap. You left one behind to go for the new. Ephesians 2.1, you hath he quickened, you hath he made alive who were dead, spiritually dead, in trespasses and sin. That's the state of all of us at one point. All right? Colossians 2.13. And you, being dead in your sins and uncircumcision of your flesh, hath he quickened together, hath made alive together, a sharer with him, with Christ, with the Godhead, having given, forgiven you all trespasses. Has he forgiven them? Yes. Did he forgive all of them? Yes. yes, he did. Remember that. He forgave them all. Don't let them sneak up and some, something, put emphasis on something of the past. Don't let them do that. It's under the blood. Under the blood. It's going to stay there. I'm not bringing it out. I'm not going to look at it. You know, I, 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 I shared something with somebody the other day. We, it's our choice what we think on. <laughs> it's our choice what we think on. You say, just a minute. I will, I will do this with you. Over the last 50 some years, multiple people has not looked at things like me. 
And some of them were not hesitant to tell me so. Some of them were not hesitant to take steps that I, I think are contrary to the word. What did you do? I basically accepted it. Except when I'd be alone somewhere, I'd think on those things a little bit. And you know what? It wasn't good for me. No, no, no. It wasn't good for me to think about that. So what did you do? Well, I'm going to tell you, I got to whining one day. Whining. You ever whine? You know, whine, whine. You know, mutter, complain, carry on. Why me? <laughs> oh, so bad. Oh, 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 oh. And, go, <laughs> and driving from one town to another, he says to me, he says, uh, and I had, at this point, a person in mind. He says, do you love him? I said, no. <laughs> and I said, just about like that, too. No. Would you love him? I, said, I looked at that and no. I said, there's no way I can get that done unless you help me. He could help me. He could help me. So what did he say? He says those things. He says, forget them. I said, now I need help. And just like a wall went up. Ba-doom! And what happened then? <laughs> it's, it's like this. He said, you say, could you think about it? I could, but I'd have to go through the wall or over it. That wouldn't be good for me. No, no, no. I could do it, but I refuse to do it. All right? I refuse to do it. I have to make a choice. All right? Now, he'll build you a wall. He'll build you something. He'll change you or give you provisions to change. As simple as that. Not complex. Wow. Okay. So, the great truth being quickened or made alive with Christ reverses the effect of spiritual death. Now, I want to share this with you because it's very important. Was any form of spiritual death present in the garden other than in the creepy thing? No. So, where did all, this, all the things of spiritual death come? It did. And who empowered him? The first Adam. But, re but remember, there is a second Adam who calls the last Adam who restored dominion to his people. <laughs> he fixes ribs in a moment. Yes? Wow. Ooh, he reverses the effects of spiritual death. Amen. All that were once alienated, all that had once alienated us from God is gone, and we now are seated with Christ together in the very presence of God. Somebody said, out of darkness into light. Notice the wonderful benefits of our salvation all happened through Christ that took place as Jesus Christ experienced them for us. He did it for us. He did it for us. His experience became our experience. The life he led on earth, he expects us to live. Oh, Lynn, you just took another bite. The works that I do, you should do also. That's just the beginning. Who's that for? All of us. Don't sit there and back off from the things of God. Roger and I have this, I've been talking about it, we have this conversation while he makes coffee. He gives me a cup. 
I said, uh, we've got part of the conversation went this way. You all realize, in 1 Corinthians 12, they have left nine gifts of the Spirit, don't you? Huh? They're all there. Nine, there's nine gifts of the Spirit. He divides to every man severally as he will. Now, hang on. Don't say you don't got one. That's bad English. Don't say you don't have any. You a child of God, you got one or more. Or access to all nine. Yes. Or he has access to all nine to give you. Amen. Don't, no, no, no. I haven't seen it. That don't mean you don't have one. Or more. I told Roger, I sat in a Sunday school class once. I did my best to behave because we had to get up and preach in a few minutes in the church we hadn't been to. A lady sat right behind us, and somehow they was on this topic, and, uh, and they said, uh, this lady said, I don't have any. I didn't say a word. A few moments later, I don't have one. I didn't say a word, but don't press me too far and too long. About the, I don't know if it was the second or third time, she said, I don't have one. I turned around and said, he gives to every man. Now, admit she was a woman, but I figure she classified, in this case, receive one too, or more. But I don't have one. He gives to every person. With that, I was done. You're either going to believe it and act on it, or you're going to ignore it. Or say something else. Was something else the truth? Not necessarily. Does it make her less a part of the family of God? It gives her, it limits where she can, how and when and where she can minister. Still a family of God. I believe she'll be in heaven with me. I may, the Holy Spirit will take care of her teaching then. It won't, be, it won't fall to anybody else. All right? All right. But hang on. Believe the word for what it says. You're one of them. You're one of his. Okay. Uh, this, his experience becomes our experience. The theological term for this is the vicarious suffering of Christ. Now, I got through that word all right, vicarious. All right? Uh, he, <laughs> he means he endured or done by one person, substituting for another. All right? Now then, we don't personally overcome sin. Jesus has already overcome sin for us. We just let him live through us and manifest that victory. <laughs> Adjust your focus is what I'm going to tell you. What have you been focusing on? All right, here we go. Jesus has already conquered death. We have his resurrection power living in us. In Galatians 6, 15, for in Christ Jesus neither circumcision availeth anything nor uncircumcision, but a new creature. A new creature avails. Galatians 5, 6, for in Christ Jesus neither circumcision availeth nor uncircumcision, but faith that worketh by love. It avails. So what avails? A new creature, a new creation, by faith that worketh by love. You're one of those. Availeth. Now let me define Availeth, according to strong, to exercise force or strength, making whole. Hang on. Colossians 2, 14 and 15 says this. Blotting out, obliterating the handwriting of ordinances, which was the law. It was against us. Got it? It was contrary to us. I don't care what you've heard. This is what the word says. It's contrary to us against us. Jesus took it out of the way. Jesus nailed it to his cross. He took the law and nailed it to the cross. You who come to him is also crucified on that same cross. Hmm? True. We'll read it shortly. Now, under law, the whole world had become guilty before God. Romans 4, 4, 15, because the law worketh wrath, for where no law is, there is no transgression. Got it? No law, no transgression. True? 
<laughs> I got a new covenant. I got a new covenant. You got a new covenant. New. Amen. New. Get excited. Amen. <laughs> new. New. Wow. Wow. Under, okay. Now, hang on. If you want, if you're jotting down any notes at all, you can write down Romans 5.13 and go over and jot down Romans 6.11 if you want to. Now, verse 15 of this. And having spoiled principalities and powers, he made a show of them openly. My wife is waiting to see if I get this right. This word for years. Triumphing. Is it close? <laughs> it's, it's close. Okay, cool. All right. Ah, neat. Now I lost my place. <laughs> it, there's a triumph over them in it. Jesus not only conquered Satan and his forces, but he spoiled them. He stripped them of all their power and authority. He also made an exhibit of them. That's what the Greek word that was translated made a show means. The phrasing, you heard it a minute ago, it means to make an Ah, okay, you heard that. We we'll pretend you did if you didn't. All right, possession. I would call it a victory parade. I can say those words, a victory parade. All right? <laughs> yeah. The question is, have you seen that parade? The other question is, have you participated as a victor in that parade? We now see how we got here. Jesus delivered us in victory, empowered to succeed, victorious in life, in earth as it is in heaven. We have now begun. Let us proceed with our recognition of our spiritual development. Galatians, or excuse me, Romans 5, excuse me, Romans 6, 5 and 6. If we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, if is a question, have you been so planted? If the answer is yes and amen, then we shall also, we shall be also in the likeness of his resurrection. That is not altogether future. Yes, I am going up someday. Meantime, his resurrection life abides in me. It transformed me. It made me alive from the dead. The spiritually dead. Now, I am to know this. In verse 6, all believers need to know that our old man is crucified with him, or crucified as he was, that the body of sin might be destroyed, annulled, the works of sin and death, the effects of sin and death, or sin rendered without effect, that henceforth we should not serve sin, not. We should not be a slave to sin. Sin and its effects no longer has dominion. Ooh, that is good. Having died, the believer never has to be under the rule and reign of sin and the judgment again. He is a partaker of Christ's death, bound and united to Christ in death. Therefore, he is dead to sin and all its effects. Believe it. Freedom is ours. Do we know it? Okay. Romans 6, 7. For he that is dead is freed from sin. There's a difference between being freed and being free. Freed is to render just or innocent, free, just, and righteous. It's a very clear definition and based on the same similar definition of righteousness. In the 1860s, President Abraham Lincoln issued the Emancipation Proclamation that freed the American slaves. Many slaves, however, continue to serve their masters in slavery because the truth was hidden from them or in some cases the slaves were afraid that they could not make it on their own. Likewise, Christians have been freed from sin. But that doesn't automatically mean all Christians experience that freedom. Through not knowing and deception, Satan continues to maintain mastery over those who have not yet realized their death and resurrection with Christ. The verses we are about to read and compare is our death to sin compared with Christ's death to sin. Also, too, comparing our life in Christ in God to Jesus' life in God. 
You say, how can you even think about comparing them? Well, let's see what the Word teaches us, shall we? Okay. Verse 8 of Romans 6. Now, if we are dead with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with Him. Do we believe that? Okay. We, knowing that Christ being raised from the dead, dieth no more. Death hath no more dominion over him. Dominion over, to rule over, to lord over, have mastery over him. For in that he died, he died unto sin once. In that he liveth, he liveth unto God. Now hang on. Ready? In Romans 6, 11, it says, Reckon yourselves as joined as one in Christ through death. No more has dominion over you. Then death no longer has dominion over you. Here comes verse 11. Likewise reckon ye also yourselves to be dead indeed unto sin, but alive unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Through is the same word, Greek word in this case, as in, E-N in Greek, or I-N is used basically in English. It's a fixed position today at rest in Jesus Christ our Lord. Now, have you figured out yet while we're dead to sin, we are not dead. We're alive, okay? God doesn't need more dead people. Okay? No, don't need more dead people. He needs people who are spirit who have spiritually moved on. He needs people who are risen from the dead spiritually. It is true that we continually must appropriate his death to sin, but there's a big difference between dying over and over and over and renewing our mind with an accomplished fact. If you're taking notes, jot down Hebrews 9.12, Hebrews 10.10, and 10.14. That's 9.12, 10.10, and 10.14. You might want to read those. Okay, in the same way that Jesus died unto sin once, now death has no more dominion over him. Those who recognize their death for Christ unto sin will not have sin rule over them anymore either. All right? Christians who are struggling with sin have not recognized the fact that they are dead to sin. Hmm. Two things here. The unrenewed mind and emotions is a residual that the old man left behind. All right? It's a residual. It's how, it's how your computer was programmed. It hasn't got it all deleted. All right? Two, the body needs to be sacrificed and senses exercised to discern good and evil. Rest Romans 12, 1 and 2, Hebrews 5, 11 through 14. The way to get rid of residual effect of the old man in our lives is not to focus on our sin, but to focus on the resurrected life with Christ or the resurrected union with Christ. All right? Now, I, I hesitate, and you may question how I could call these two kings, but this is the basis of our comments here. Somewhere in your past, two kings, each king made each of us an offer. All right? Your decision determines which king will rule and govern your life. Because you'll make him a king, is what you do. Also, your decisions determine the rule and the reign of our chosen king to express himself in your spirit, soul, and body. Romans 5, 21. That as sin has reigned, if something reigns <laughs> it's a, as a king that rules and governs unto death, as sin has reigned unto death, or ruled and governed unto death. Even so, might grace reign through righteousness unto eternal life by Jesus Christ our Lord. So grace can reign as a king that rules and governs. Choose to allow grace to rule and govern. Linked with righteousness unto eternal life by Jesus Christ our Lord. 
let it, I'm going to look at this. I keep confessing to you people little things that pop up in my life. You know, or I'm going to, confess, I'm going to borderline confess another one. Uh, Sashi, uh, 1 Peter 2.24 says this. <laughs> How many has divorced the first section from the second? Let me read it to you. Who in his own self, as Jesus, bore our, your sins in his own body. Did he do that? He bore your sins in his own body. It's already done deal, right? Done for the whole world, right? Amen. On the tree, that we being dead to sin, are we dead? Okay. Should live unto righteousness. Amen. Amen? All right. By whose stripes he were healed. Do you see any difference between the first part and the last part? Do you have a tendency to separate one from the other? Don't. <laughs> Don't. In his own body he bore our sins. That we should live unto righteousness. In his own body, by his stripes, we were healed. Is that true? Okay, let me read this in the Amplified Bible. Same verse. He personally bore our sins in his own body on the tree as an altar offered himself on it, that we might die, cease to exist to sin, and live to righteousness. By his wounds you were healed. Same event? Same event. Stripes, wounds, crucifixion, spear, on a crown, on it goes. Wow. He put them right here together. Let's make it clear. So, he bore our sins. Can we, we can kind of agree that, or we do agree that he also, with his wounds, we were healed? Can we, okay, let's add to that. Let's go back to Matthew 8, 17. That he might be fulfilled, which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet in chapter 52 and 53, saying himself, Himself, Jesus himself, took our infirmities. He took our infirmities and bare our what? Sicknesses. Where did he bear them? On him, on his own body, in his own body. Ooh. Wow. Okay. So, what was ours, sin and its effect, Jesus took to himself, setting us free. Amen? Romans 6, 12 through 14, and we'll wind down this morning. Let not, therefore, let not sin, therefore, reign as a king that ruled and governed in your what? A mortal body. Got it? Yeah. That you should obey it in the lust thereof. Verse 13. Here's another choice. Neither yield ye members as limbs or body parts, as instruments, weapons of war of unrighteousness. Don't give them to the enemy unto sin. But yield yourselves unto God as those that are alive from the dead, your members, limbs and body parts as instruments, weapons of war of righteousness unto God. Verse 14. For sin shall not have dominion, the exercise of control or lordship over you. 
For you are not under law, but under grace. Since we as believers have entered the, the most intimate union with Christ, Christ the King, with the fruits of his suffering and death, and with the blessings of his life, surely death has lost his grip on us. Amazing. Amen. Father, we thank you. You have freed us. And we don't want to live without your freedom. We want to be free, completely free. Help us to understand it. Let the Spirit of the living God make it real to each and every one of us that we have eyes to see, ears to hear, and a heart to receive. Absolutely. We see it as it becomes a matter of course in our lives and the lives of others. The lives of the family of God represented here and the body of Christ worldwide. So be it that the body of Christ comes alive with spiritual life. Life as God has it. Give to the Son, give to the believers. Absolutely. Doing the ministry. Bringing your word that you sign to each and every one of us. When you assign it, share with those who are we are to share with. And then you confirm working with us confirming the word with signs following. It's that simple. Whatever those signs are. New life in Christ, freedom from oppression, freedom from depression, freedom from this and freedom from that. Freedom in its completeness and its entirety is the body of Christ. In Jesus' name it's true, and we thank you for it. Amen. Amen. Amen.